I need something to hide my notes behind. Lisa liquor. Lisa's liquor. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people. There's been a lot of things hiding behind liquor. It's normally a good mask. Oh my god. Oh, he smells really good. Okay. All right. Here we go. Action, y'all. All right, pour us up another Action, round. Action, y'all. <laughs> Welcome to Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is Day Drinking Nashville with Kimber and... And Amy. Hey, guys. Good morning. We're uh, here, right here at Wine Down Nashville again, as usual. And Kimber's brought us something great to drink and also a special guest. So first, introduce our special guest, and then we're going to all have a little toast while we're listening to his Yay, special story. Absolutely. This is Todd Cameron. Thank you so much for Thanks. being here with us today. Yep. We've known each other how long? About seven years. I, I mean, guess about yeah, seven about, years yeah. when you it's, came to Nashville. And uh, I, he was just kind of telling me his story, and I was like super excited to hear about it. So we're going to get to hear about that here in just a few minutes. Absolutely. We're going to start us off with something really good to drink here first, so that way we can toast a cheer to you. For your success so far and a uh, little vespertino today um i don't know if you have you ever seen this before guys have y'all ever seen i've this never before? heard of vespertino but never all i know is i told you how tired i was this morning and i liked the idea of you tricking me into <laughs> things that smell like they're going to wake me up but that's a that's kind Opposite of the understanding so this is a tequila cream and most people go "Ooh, tequila cream what in the world that would go great in my coffee and it would go great in your coffee mm. and vespertino all day long at the office <laughs> Oh, that's right. <laughs> People would know just uh, what do you call Hashtag in your coping Poor skills. <laughs> <laughs> Vespertino actually means evening in Spanish, by the oh. way. And so it's actually could made be morning, with. Could be, morning. could be morning, yes. It's actually made with um, silver tequila, uh, farm fresh cream, uh, dairy cream. Uh, a little bit of brown sugar and some cinnamon. Wow. wow. So, okay, so where does this come from? So um, this is actually, um, I think upstate, so uh, I think maybe like Maine, I believe, because I know mm. that the Griffin's Wharf, when we try that in a minute, actually comes from Maine, and I think these are in the same kind of oh, wow. area. So, I mean, I could substitute that for coffee. I could, I could get on this game. Hmm. That is so good. Who needs coffee? <laughs> you know, the difference between, I think, like a... Irish cream that you have because it's normally made with whiskey. Right. Whereas this is made with tequila. Right. So. And then we went to Jamaica and we drank rum cream and we're like, hmm. Yes. <laughs> it can be made with tequila. Get anything. a cream of everything. <laughs> yeah. Cream of liquor. Cream that of is liquor. really good. There we go. I mean, I like this it. can be made with. Um, you can throw this over ice or you know or neat. Uh, you know what you mm. can do with this? You can make chocolate chip muffins with this. Oh my gosh! Or you there can you make um, what are some of the other? That make the family that, reunion a lot of fun. Wouldn't that make it? A lot of fun? I just <laughs> love that it's from Maine because you know Maine is well known for cream liqueur. Cream <laughs> liqueur muffin. Oh, you know, pumpkin muffins. You can make pumpkin. it with some pumpkin. That would taste amazing with that. Right, we're going to get great. the kitchen staff on that. Oh, yeah. oh we don't have a kitchen staff anyway. <laughs> You're looking at it. <laughs> this is the kitchen staff. Well, fantastic. So go ahead and... Uh, cheers, guys. Yeah, cheers. No, I just you finished mine, so... Uh, oh, you know tell what? There's us, probably a little bit left. Tell us about your your journey to Nashville. Where are you from and how'd you get here? Yeah, so uh, West Virginia. Spent my whole life there. And um, pretty much just kind of after I finished up college, well, during college and stuff, I was kind of playing around. Um, Little dive bars, riders rounds, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they call them open mics up there. And um, once I kind of finished up my master's at Marshall in Huntington, uh, I was like, man, I gotta figure out what I wanna do because I was really, really starting to get into where I wanted to start playing full shows instead of just doing more open mics. So I uh, formed a, you know, like a little band with some guys up there and we were kind of picked up a few gigs and stuff. And finally, uh, after one night, we did a battle of the bands oh, and yeah. We won it. How how we won it though? Here's the trick. You know, battle of bands is all based on screams, and so you know, a buddy of mine called me up and said, "Hey, if you come down, if you win it, you're gonna get to open up for a special guest I'm bringing in at the club this Saturday." And we were like, "Okay." So we just called up our good friends in a sorority down the street. <laughs> sorority girls are great. You give them a couple of cases of beer, and they will scream as loud as you want them to. I like your attitude. Give them all alcohol, just like me. Give them me back up. We'll scream. We'll do Cheers. some screaming in a minute. You don't even have to go to listen to the songs when we're done. When it goes silent. I just go crazy. So, uh, you know, there was only one other guy that showed up, and he brought his wife, so you know, he didn't have a chance. We won. Just so and it, was just, it was just easy. We had it all figured out, and, and we didn't know who we were going to open up for until that 
night. And then uh, they were like, all right, well, you guys win. You get to open up. And, uh, since you guys are the only ones that showed up, you know, us and the other guy. And they were like, hey, you're opening up for Brett Michaels this oh, Saturday. And we were crazy. like, that's awesome. oh, okay. So we got to figure this out. We got to, we probably need to like, you know, figure out a show. And, and so they gave us like six songs to play. And, wow. uh, you know, we did all, we did all covers except for like one original at that time. And so a friend of mine had the first generation iPhone that had just started recording videos. Oh goodness. And yeah. she like filmed it and posted it up on YouTube, used those videos and just shot them to like every venue across the state. Hey, we just opened up for Brent Michaels. Yeah, you should have us in your venue. And, and, you know, of course, West Virginia, you know, uh, there's not a lot of music comes through. So when, when it does come through, like people are pretty supportive of it. Uh, and it kind of got some traction from there. And before you know it, we were pretty much touring all over West Virginia and wow. ultimately led to us meeting a guy who ran a studio here in Nashville. Um, and his name is Tom Drennan. And he played drums for uh, Daryl Worley. Mm -hmm. We yeah. got on that gig, yeah. opened up for Daryl. And Tom said, hey, if you ever come to Nashville, you know, let me know. And so I think it was like two weeks later, we're like, let's go to Nashville. Never been. Took off down here and met with him and kind of you know checked everything out and started even recording like that weekend. And so mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm trying to figure out about maybe getting down here. And it all just worked out. It's crazy. Long story short, I, I was working. I'm still working for Pepsi, obviously, here and there. But like at that point in time, like the HR director was a huge supporter of my music. And he was like, you need to get somewhere where you can pursue a career. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, West Virginia, you know, I'm, I'm here. And he's like, no. Nah. I met your music career. And so they made a couple phone calls and I think two weeks later I was living in Nashville. It was wow. like the craziest <laughs> transition from visiting here, going back for like a week and a half and then two weeks later living Alcohol, down here. Alcohol, Blue Girls, Brett Michaels. It was wild, yeah. <laughs> it all worked. I was living the dream, you know? It was living the dream. That's right. Absolutely. So. That is kind of a wild ride. Yes. It's time. Do. All right, just, just a little, little Just sip. a teeny, Look, teeny we're bit. Trip. All Look, right, there we there. go. We're good. I'm good at the little teeny tiny sip. Because we're going to make us a cocktail here that shortly. That is so good. Isn't it nice? Yes. And it actually does taste really good. It's really good. And you, like I said, you know, you can bake with this, which I think is fantastic. So you put it in your morning coffee if you want to. You can have it in all kinds <laughs> of know, stuff. You know, when you're you going just, to work and you need that little spike. And the crew's coming in. The crew's in. coming in. Dude, my trophy, my trophy husband. Look, I'm not awake yet. <laughs> hey, I need some more. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Yay. Thank Salud. you. Yay. Bye. Yeah, it does taste really good. That's crazy. Mm. I could be like a holiday party favorite right there. Yeah. It's definitely That's got the around. basic fall girl we'll all written all over it. Drunk Uncle Eddie. <laughs> you could do <laughs> like a um, you could do like a a pumpkin spice coffee with that. Mm. Look, I'm on the pumpkin thing. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for fall. <laughs> You're you know? one of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm See, just, basic fall girl. I'm, I'm, fall yep, time girl. I'm falling on. Yep, there I am. So. Oh, my gosh. Good. All right. So you came to Nashville. Yep. You started... Well, what is your college degree in? That's what I want to know. MBA. I did my master's in business. Oh, so. well, good for you. That yeah. actually comes in handy in the music business. Yeah, there's there's a lot from the marketing side of just, I mean, obviously, I mean, you're constantly trying to reinvent yourself and right. like do something that is going to take off, especially with social media these days. Right. Um, and Interesting. I would say, you know, you're building a business, you're building a brand. And yes. so it, it's all about, I mean... As much as I say it, I think it's about 70 to 75% business and 25% artist talent. <laughs> so uh, that's mm -hmm. kind of how it feels anyway. I've learned that mm -hmm. along the way. So, um, but yeah, it, it, was a, it was a great move. It was, it was kind of spur of the moment, but you yeah. know, it worked out and obviously it gave me an opportunity to start pursuing that dream, you know, a little so bit more. So when you got here to Nashville and then you started to do, you told me a couple things I thought were really interesting, but one of them, you had a duo. What was the mm -hmm. name of the duo? Yeah, it was in a duo. It was called Adair's Run. Um, yeah. We were actually marketed as a full band at first because all four of the guys, like everybody moved down, you know, from Marshall or up in Huntington. Oh, okay. And we were just playing everywhere we could, going back to West Virginia a lot, but just then trying to expand out, you know, Texas and going up the Midwest and there. And if we could go south, we went south. We liked it, but it was always warmer. <laughs> it seemed like we always decided warmer. to go up north when it was like middle of the winter. And it was like, this is not a good idea. <laughs> <Less> <laughs> snow in the cold, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we, uh, we were doing that, but we totally avoided Broadway. Like didn't even yeah. play Broadway for probably the first five years that we were really? here. Really? Didn't even play it, never. Uh, every once in a while we would get like a one-off, like that might be an event. I'm, 
you know, I think CMA Fest, we played a couple, you know, downtown, but that was it. Yeah. Like yeah. pretty much it was like, we did, were not playing Broadway. The blessing behind that is, you know, Broadway, people come downtown, they're here to see music. Like yeah. they're engaged. They're totally like, they expect to see the music. But when you got to go to somebody else's hometown and like they're there just hanging out, that's their bar, you know, like they're just there to drink and have a good time. Right. How do you not become background music? How do you right. get them engaged the same way? That's right. That's right. That's true. So, it's pretty unique in that way. You're right about that. So learning that was probably one of the best things that ever happened to us because then when we did start coming back here to Broadway, it was just like cake. It's right. Like, this right. is easy. So actually, so then once you started doing that and then you guys had a, uh, I loved your story about, um, tell me kind of the transition of that and how you got your um, your song going, which I'm going to let you talk mm -hmm. about, and then the subsequent video, and kind of what was your purpose of making the video? Because at this point, what my understanding is, you were not on a label yet. Nope. So to have all of these things going, and you're not being backed by a label, that's pretty ambitious. It is. So I want to hear, how did you get that going? So essentially what we did was um, we kept we kept performing out as much as we could and what it started was was the venue owners that we were playing like some of the some of the venues were starting to get a lot bigger you know three four five hundred capacity so they were kind of like the club scene for the the booking agencies like you know the up-and-coming artists so what was going on was those owners were calling the agencies and saying hey you need to get like you need to get these guys mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. I mean we're calling some of the you know the biggest agencies in town I mean we would go in and have these meetings. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's I'm a first. Trying, like, set a setting and just put this on weird too. I apologize. All good. All good. I'm so sorry. So I guess the, yeah, the club owners. Yeah, let's go back to, yes, the club okay. owners. So these club owners were calling the aid, the booking agencies, and saying, hey, you need to check out this band at Dare's Run. Like, like, they're playing here. Like, they're killing it. Here's videos. Here's pictures. Like, go check out our socials. And kind of created that, you know, organic buzz. You know, mm -hmm. we were doing, like, a grassroots approach. We're just trying to go out and hit, like, the club circuit, go back every six to eight weeks and just keep building up that following. Right. That seemed like the better approach to get people to, to really kind of latch on to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we focused more on the show. How do we put on a show? Versus, yeah. like, hey... Here's a tip, you know, can you play this song? Here's a tip, can you play right. this song? Like, yes. we wanted to have like just songs rolling one after the other because mm -hmm. when you were there, let's make it feel like a concert vibe. And it worked and it, and it got the attention of the owners. It started getting attention from some of the booking agencies. A couple of them came out, watched us do showcases and stuff and they were, they were interested. And that's kind of your first step is getting signed on with a booking agency that wants to get behind you, put you on opening slots. Right. So we did, we started getting some opening acts. Um, all the way through, I mean, I remember, you know, uh, there was a guy, Chase Bryant, he was up and coming at that time. He was on tour with Tim McGraw. We, mm -hmm. we did mm -hmm. one with him. Mm -hmm. um, then we started, you know, opening up for Low Cash a couple times. Yeah. We did that like six times with them. Uh, Chase Rice and uh, Colt Ford, we started yeah. kind of just getting those out. And, and it was great for us because it was getting us exposure. We were getting a lot of feedback. And then, you know, from there, we were completely self-managed. I mean, like we were just, you know, we'd had a couple managers in between that, you know, they tried to do some stuff and it just kind of wasn't the same vibe and direction of what we were doing. Right. And then it was like, okay, well, we're, our songs are starting to get some traction on Spotify, Apple Music, all that. So, you know, we, what do we kind of want to do? We need to get some more content. That's where we lacked. Mm -hmm. We just never had enough content. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided to make a music video for a song, and, and the song that was performing the best was, uh, and we had received the best feedback on, was called "I'm Good for It." Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we sat down. Uh, mm -hmm. I met with the guy who was doing some videos, and had had several, a lot of them had success on CMT. Mm -hmm. um, kind of mapped out like, what do we want to do, and didn't want to do the standard all. Yeah, I feel like I see it all the time. You know, it's it's guy meeting a girl at a bar, you know, or whatever. And I, <laughs> That's or hey, weird. let's let's drop down the truck <laughs> and tailgate, right? <laughs> I just is like, let's tell a story. That's my biggest thing. <laughs> tell a story, as, tell you can, a story. as you can tell, right? I'm doing that now. I'm a storyteller too. Can I tell a story? You got to. Yeah. That's how hey, you I keep people you engaged. Bar. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I would not listen to him in a bar. What yeah. my friend Ricky? See, <laughs> most meetings are in a bar. Okay. Most fun the, meetings. The, the are better, in a bar. the better ones, anyway. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of me meetings that could have been emails too. So, anyway, we uh, we did the video and we kind of mapped out. Um, the song was written. I had actually written it um, about a girl back from my hometown that had come through like a really 
really tough breakup. I think it was a lot of kind of abuse and stuff in different ways, mm -hmm. uh, you know, more than anything. I, not so much domestic, but a lot of verbal and stuff, you know, and it can, it can obviously go one way or the other, but I had the idea just because I saw her commitment issues coming off of that to anyone else, thinking mm -hmm. it was just going to happen again. So the song called I'm Good For It was just basically like me telling my side as if, well, what if I was the new guy? Like, hey, you know, you can trust me. Like, I'm good for it. I'm not going to be yeah. how that guy was, you know, right. all that. Um, so it took off. It, it had, did really well. So we actually mapped the video out to highlight domestic violence. Wow. And we did that That's in amazing. the video. So That's it's like, amazing. let's take a topic that is touchy, that yes. a lot of people don't Do really see or don't really understand and it's extremely difficult and you know we even used um you know i think it was a national domestic abuse like we use like the stats at the very end of the video mm -hmm. to highlight it's like if you know anybody going through this there's help like i like to do something that is hey let's let's tell a story in the video but like let's also let's take it a totally different angle that most people aren't well, yeah. aren't going that was, you know, that was really the, smart and have like standard. a social cause right sure yeah and, and it worked. And, it went, and the CMT people, uh, you know, Leslie Fram and her team, they were great. Um, we sent it to them, and she messaged back. And she was actually, um, and, and I've done this a hundred times. I, I can't tell you how many people I traded contacts for just trying to get our stuff to the industry. Like oh, yeah, anybody sure. at this label, if it was at a booking agency, if it was mm -hmm. a management company, publishers, whatever, you know, hey, let me send them the stuff. And, you know, I got a few responses, got a few meetings, and mm -hmm. then got a lot of no's that were in the answer of no reply. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but through that, I got Leslie's contact, and I actually sent her three songs. And we were already pretty sure we were going to do I'm Good For It anyway. Mm -hmm. But I sent her just the variety and said, hey, we're thinking about doing a video, and we'd love to pitch it. She's like, I'm already singing I'm Good For It by the second verse. you know. So she's like, I'm, I'm in on oh, this one. That's and amazing. So we filmed the video, got it to her. Her and the team, they loved it. They loved the idea. And uh, sure enough, we got on the fan vote countdown. And mm -hmm went in four weeks it's, it started it debuted at number five and it went all the way to number one after four weeks Yay, so it was super so cool it's just crazy it, it is crazy big. no it's label crazy. nothing no sport i love it there every time nothing. i go and with no label like i just <laughs> yeah. like go what what is this story <laughs> yes and, it, and it's tough because like i mean obviously labels have uh, you know labels management companies booking agencies they right. all tie in together publishers to support the artists, right? And we're out here just doing it completely on our own. And you know, and one of the things that you know, I feel like you probably are are aware of this as well. But sometimes when you're doing things on your own, mm -hmm. it is those stepping stones that make you very humble to know that I've worked so hard, and we've worked so hard to get here. And just knowing that, you know, it's almost like, all right, I, I can do this. You know, times that you wanted to back away mm -hmm. or walk away from it. Or things that pushed you away and you know I know it's not supposed to be but sometimes God's little plans sometimes can just be hanging right there yeah, absolutely. And he's just saying just keep going just keep going I think it takes a lot in a person to do it too because a lot of people would give up you know right. would or wouldn't go that far to those great lengths so, absolutely I mean, and that's kudos to you for doing that because I mean that really is, um, you know, I always relate everything to baseball since I grew up with a baseball family. Am I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I think about players. There's a perfect example of so many players that they didn't get recruited to the major league right off the right. bat. But so all the ones, some of the ones that didn't never try out. But the, right. there, there are guys that try out. And guess what? That's how they got on. They right. didn't have the big shebang and the whole right. thing. They just like, kept so working hard. They, they just kept care. working hard. And they, yeah. you know, so in the music industry, that's pretty impressive, especially Absolutely. in Nashville, because people get so like beaten down. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I love brutal. the music industry. <laughs> it is brutal. It, it, but, it can uh, be. Yeah, it can be. So I have a question then. Since you came here seven years ago, um, talking about Nashville and a lot of artists that do come here to record or try to to make it big and not even having a label at the time and having anybody at that moment looking at you what is the difference that you feel like um, seven years ago from how Nashville was to how it is today uh, because it has changed a lot so I just wanted your perspective don't talk on about it. hot tubs Kimber <laughs> The hot tugs, hot tugs in the back of the truck. Yeah, <laughs> going I saw down that Broadway. too. I saw that too. <laughs> pedal faster uh, on the taverns. There's definitely more bachelorette parties <laughs> <laughs> now versus then. I, you know, again, I, I feel like it was so, it, obviously it was more country music. You know, like even, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago when I was coming down here, it was like, 
you know, it was still geared totally towards country music, and I feel like it was just starting to kind of open up those doors to other genres. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, uh, like the writer's rounds and stuff, like they were so much more like people went to those because they wanted to hear the stories behind the song. Right. They wanted to meet the people who were writing the songs. And I can't tell you how many times I remember songs being played in 2012, and then I'd hear them on the radio two years later. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't even know who this guy was, but he got his break within a couple years, you know, of working yeah. that. And Absolutely. I think that that was one of the cool things. Now, you know, you go to them, um, they, they seem more almost like a social event, and like people talk really loud. And, and uh, so it, it, it's a little bit different of a game, but obviously, to now how's Nashville changed? I mean, this is like Bachelorette Nation here, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's like the party city. It's Little Vegas. It might as well just be Bourbon Street. Nash Vegas. <laughs> That's what it's, so it, it's, it's just wild. But, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities here, right? Even it outside is. of music. And the music scene now is just, I mean, you can go up and down Broadway, you can hear Motley Crue to freaking gospel songs. I mean, yeah. like contemporary Christian, and whatever woo-hoo. country. My, husband, oh, my yeah. husband says, this is a woohoo Nashville. I go, what's woohoo Nashville? Nashville? He goes, well, they go down the street and they go, woo! That's, That's, it. It. Yeah. That's the next song. We need Yeehaw back. <laughs> Yeehaw back. Yeah. Yes, Yeehaw. we do. So, but but when you were with your duo, when, so talk about, I want to also know, you were on a show mm-hmm. called Real Country on USA Network. And uh, was that when you were also with your duo? Sure. Yep. yep. And so uh, who was on that show it's with cool. you? It was crazy. Uh, well, the, the actual uh, guest judges were uh, Shania Twain, Travis Tritt, and Jake Owen. So, okay. and each wow. one of them were able to choose seven artists uh, each that they were going to be like the coach for. And basically the, the whole theme was to, they were going to have like a different episode geared towards something every night. Like ours was like drink up, party down. And I can't remember some of the other episode <laughs> themes, but that's how the songs were geared towards that too. Um, and so there was one artist from each of the you know judges team that would perform against each other. So you go three of you, all three of you go out and play. And you get fan voted. They had like these, I guess these uh, little toggles or something out in the crowd that they just voted. Mm-hmm. And then, then it came down, one got voted off. And then it was the head-to-head match. And then that person from that round won. You won like $10,000 in like a publishing deal. If you won your episode, then you went to the finale, which was a hundred grand a record deal. Mm-hmm. And um, so it, it, was, it was interesting. It, it was a long process. I think we started in like the end of February, first of March. Mm-hmm. Like they were just kind of vetting everybody, like trying to figure out who would be on it. And, and you know, they're out, obviously it's the creators of The Voice that own the show. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they just wanted one strictly for country. Yes. And um, it, it was pretty cool. I, I guess they checked out like over a thousand artists, like, wow. and then drilled down to 21. And we just, happenstance happened to get on this and it was really wild because they wanted this Texas country artist and my buddy Brandon Steen he uh, was managing him and he he said man I he can't do this because the the shoot dates are going to be when he's already locked into a cruise that he's running the crew like he's the head guy of the cruise Mm -hmm. and you know the Texas music scene is like totally different than Nashville like those guys have like their own huge red dirt following out there it's it's just wild it's wild it's Texas it's it's Texas everything's bigger out in Texas including the hats so they uh (laughs) 10 gallon ones that's what they are big hats no cattle anyway they uh so those guys uh, were doing that and so my ex-boyfriends too no uh, big hats no cattle oh lord Talk to big talk. <laughs> well, we've all got scars, right? I've got some battle scars, whether you got bucked off or not. Anyway. Uh, um, so, yeah, we, we got the call. And he's like, hey, man, do you want to do this? I'm going to submit you guys to the, the, uh, the writers behind basically the show. And they're mm-hmm. looking. This is what they want to do. And I was like, yeah, sure. Sure enough, we got a call. And then it was like a phone call or two every week. And it was like, send us pictures of this. Send us videos of this. Send us it. Like... And finally, I mean, it came down to, I think, July. So from like literally 1st of March all the way to July. And we, of course, we did a couple of like in-person auditions Mm -hmm. at um, downtown and like they had it like blocked off and we couldn't see anybody. We didn't know who was judging us, but they were like just stand there and the whole room was dark behind. Like we just had lights on us and they're like, go ahead and play your song, sir. I was like, okay. So, but it was a lot of fun and, and, you know, but more or less, we, we were kind of the jokesters, anyway, of, yeah. of the whole thing. And not that y'all could tell anything. <laughs> so we did that, and they, they loved it. And um, 
it ended up like finally it was like five days before and I remember telling them I was like hey look I'm gonna have to take off work if we're gonna do this like I need to know are we on this thing or not because they were like we're like 80 percent sure I'm like well I need like 99 okay <laughs> just before I go put in some time off and and sure enough and uh, we actually filmed the whole thing I think in like a week and a half it was wow. crazy they filmed the whole show wow. it was wild um and yeah so we got to get on the show um uh, unfortunately um uh, being fan voted, uh, we went out there. We were the first act, first show, like to go out and film this, and uh, it was uh, it was definitely an interesting experience. But uh, Shania Twain, Travis Tritt didn't have uh, the most positive things to say, <laughs> and so you know. Uh, but the crowd, uh, the crowd absolutely loved it. Um, but this is what I say: like, unfortunately, crowds are easily swayed by someone of you know any kind oh, of yeah. image out there. So I think a lot of people took to listening to the judges and uh, they decided they wanted to be Simon Cow. so you know that's just how it yeah, works but it was a great experience Jake Owen stood up for us and he was you know trying to help us and, and everything too and you know the fact that he even chose us for his team was really awesome I, yeah, I, I think a lot of Jake really for that really. oh yeah he's a good great guy, guy. Yeah, oh my so. gosh yeah. do we um, want to talk about while we're kind of in this middle of this transition we have a transition story and I thought maybe we'd have a transition alcohol Okay. I, I think that would probably be a great idea. Um, because Let's make the switch. We're going to uh, make the switch here in just a minute. But yes, when we get back here in just a few minutes, we're going to uh, make a little cocktail. We want to talk about your newest things that you have going on sure. right now, which sounds amazing. And uh, I know Amy's probably got some really good questions for you, too. So, so what, day drinking part two? Yeah. Part two. <laughs> What are we drinking on? So the uh, Uber edition. <laughs> we'll we'll check, we'll check. We are actually going into Griffin's Wharf. This is uh, coffee liqueur, 1773, my friends. This is fantastic. You want something that tastes really good? This is actually from Maine. Um, it's uh, it's um, produced by uh, Stroudwater Distillery and also uh, coffee by design and these are beans from south america and central america but the combo here oh my gosh so what do they do they just put the alcohol right in the beans or oh, like that's right it's so good just, <laughs> just give it a whirl give it give all right it a i'm giving it a whirl all right. so we're what we're drinking now is a little vespertino uh we just did a little cocktail uh, mix out there a second ago so you got the uh, recipe on how to make this but this is your good morning. Ah, good wake morning. up, wake up, Nashville. <laughs> wake, up, <laughs> wake up, Nashville. <laughs> mm. the oh yeah. The loves it. Oh, that's a little bit that's, of a strong little wake up. <laughs> that'll get you kicking. Yeah, who needs that? <laughs> get you kicking and then put who your sleep later on. Who needs when you got that? So that you put this my, in the work uh, the work office. You know? Right. So, goodness. This gracious. will be my morning nap. <laughs> Morning nap drink. Oh, that is really good. Dark hey, roasted. Drink up, party down, right? <laughs> they always say uh, dark roasted um, coffee supports healthy heart, isn't that something? Yeah, like that? I like so, that idea. Yeah, I like it too. So. Maybe it'll just get us like metabolism going so I don't have to work out later. I'll just drink a couple just of these. Right? Between, the these two, might, yeah, between these two, I might be able to. Between these two, I might be able to. It just kind of balances you. You just stay level. <laughs> You're not going to get too excited. Later. You're not going to be like, you know, too down. Yeah, this is like bipolar in a cup. <laughs> Yeah. Caffeine rush of our It tastes of both sides of me. <laughs> That's what it is. So, need a, a bipolar Captain Morgan there or something. To, this is your uh, caffeine uh, rush uh, rush version of uh, 8 a.m. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, that'll definitely wake you up. Yeah. Fantastic. It's great. It tastes great. Now, where can we get something like this, Kimber? If somebody's out there listening yeah. right now and they're wanting to get their hands on this. Well, you could probably end up coming down to Wind Down Nashville and uh, having <laughs> yeah. a cocktail. That's weird. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then also, a lot of the retail stores carry both of these products. Um, if they don't, you can always ask for them and they'll usually bring them in for you. But, um, you know, since COVID happened, and a lot of things were shut down for such a long time. People got very creative at home. They were buying stuff and taking it home or having it delivered and making their own cocktails or experimenting. Because I've had so many friends just over the last year tell me, I made this new cocktail. And um, I even made one called the Kimber, which we will share soon. Yeah. I made one called the Kimber. So yeah, we're gonna, love it. we're gonna actually have that sometime soon. And it is delicious, oh, absolutely that is delicious. delicious. So. Well, I'm glad that we finally got a hold of this transition drink because we're gonna go to the transition story. And um, 
And so uh, I love talking to Todd and hearing all of this stuff and seeing how he's gotten this success so far with the duo. But then there's always a plot twist. <laughs> There's a plot twist, Always. but it's a good one. It's a good plot twist. So um, I want to hear the next half of the story. So yeah, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> life kind of happens, uh, and obviously, um, you know, over over time, you know, I had been in the duo basically uh, with the guitar player for ten years. Um, you know, when you're on a road with somebody. Ten years and stuff, you know, you start to develop differences, and especially like as the music develops too. Yeah, there's changes in what we we're both wanting and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, th those started kind of driving a wedge. There were some outside factors too, you know, between you know just trying to get the shows that we were trying to pull, perform at that time, trying to get uh, working with um, you know a couple an attorney in town on you know really getting to that next level of hey, like let's. You know, we've got the financial backing now. Like we're going to do this. You know, sign this, sign these agreements, and then you know, the next step is going to be, you know, obviously shooting towards radio mm -hmm. and going that with, uh, you know, working with a label and going that that route. And you know, as a couple things that were going on outside, uh, you know, obviously there's some kids that went viral online, and so that kind of turned the attention of the folks that were working with us. And you know, anytime social media comes into play, it's always, you know, I mean, it's. It's anybody's game. You blow up overnight, and you know yeah. you're, that's the overnight success. They don't know about the ten years prior to that that you've been putting in to get there. But right. Right. that's kind of with some stuff that happened. Uh, we drifted apart, um, and you know, obviously after being told no a million times and watching other people even open up for us at fairs and festivals and stuff like get to there, it was it was really frustrating. And so you were talking earlier about you know the, the times to to quit and the times to be resilient, you know, and persevere mm -hmm. during that. That was. I, I had many a days that I said I'm done, and it's probably mm -hmm. about like somebody mm -hmm. who's suffering from a hangover saying I'm never gonna drink again. I feel but, like oh, I'm sorry, the music... I might have done that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never drinking again. Then you get that call. Hey, you wanna go drink tonight? But I did not give up, did I? No. There you go. See, all right. So, so uh, yeah, then it's kind of the same thing. Music's just as addicting. <laughs> right. Addicting, yeah. And uh, but yeah, I can't. I put it down many a times and was like, oh, we're done, I'm done, I'm, I'm done with this, I'm tired of hearing this, and then, you know, you come back to it because it's something you love and stuff, I'm not saying this isn't something you love too, this is really good, <laughs> but cheers on that, cheers. <laughs> I can cheers to that one, so, uh, but, um, so we, we ended up uh, playing our last couple shows going into the first part of 2020. Um, Last one actually was House of Blues in Dallas. So thought that was a good one to just kind of ride mm -hmm. out. And mm -hmm. at that point, we were starting to hear more about Corona. And I was coming down to, a, down to a point in my life where I was like, okay, like everything we're doing is not working. Like it starts to work. And, you know, the music business is the biggest roller coaster you'll ever ride. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's coming off of this high. Like this is about to happen. So just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And then it doesn't happen. And then you got to go back and rework something different. Um, trying to reinvent yourself and, and I guess uh, to be original mm -hmm. out there and gain the respect and, and trust of fans and then get it from the industry as well too. It's, it's, it's like two different ball games. Yeah. And, yeah. Or at least it felt that way. Mm -hmm. And so last show, I think Corona started uh, getting like really, really bad towards, probably about towards the end of February. And I think it was like with tornado, with a tornado. Right. And then we had, right. right after that, we had, you know, Corona shut down like a week and a half yeah. later. Um, between all that, I just we just kind of rode out in the Corona sunset, as I told everybody. <laughs> and, and I was it needs done. Needs to be a song. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Corona sunset. Uh, maybe Kenny will cut it. <laughs> so, we, uh, I just I took a break for a while. I was just like, I'm I'm done. I'm just kind of focused on on day gig for a little bit, and I, I needed that like mental space to just kind of just reflect on everything I'd done and mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for this. Like you were talking about yeah. earlier, all mm -hmm. those tough moments, you know, I see a lot of, you know, people in town that, you know, just cause they know somebody or they're drinking with the right people or somebody in the family's got a lot of money, you know, I always feel like the artists that last the longest, the ones that I still see that are out there killing it and doing Absolutely. great are the ones that 
toured for years and played for barely enough money to get enough gas in the tank to get home back yeah. to Nashville. Yeah. You know, go play for 30 yeah. people driving nine hours, but those 30 people are going to download their music and buy their t-shirts and they're banking on that, yep. you know, sleeping in the van. I can't tell you how many nights that we've done, you know, played and, and done that. And then we've had great nights too where I forgot to even get the paycheck because <laughs> we were just walked out, we were just on such a high <laughs> after the show. It's like, oh wait, we get paid for this too. Like, you know, this is, oh yeah, this is even better. I forgot about that. Like, but I, I wasn't in it for the money. If I was, I'd have quit a long time ago. But uh, it was, it was such a, a good experience for me to take that time and reflect. And then, you know, obviously Corona got everything shut down anyway. Yeah. And nobody's really playing music. Um, and I took that time and I started just kind of writing it a little bit again, trying to make some plans. I was, I was pretty much done with Nashville. Like, I'm gonna move, like, got some new opportunities. Like, I'm gonna pursue, you know, something with work, you know, with my degree and, and kind of mm -hmm. work that angle. And just, I'll just do music for fun. And, uh, Started writing songs. I had some songs already written that I wrote by myself, and I, I, you know, I couldn't release when we were in the duo. And my friends were like, "Why don't you just throw those out there?" Yes, so yes. I just started throwing out a couple songs, and I got on TikTok or Tic Tac, whatever you call it. I don't know, <laughs> some. And sure enough, I mean, it's a great platform for new artists. And social media is something that I would tell any new artist coming to town. Like, if you're not working socials, then you're you're not in the game. And I I wish I had done that sooner, but Never too late to start. You know, when you you posted something, I remember one night, um, and I was just sitting around the house. I'm just flipping through um, just social media, mm -hmm. having a glass of wine, and I, I I saw you on there, and I was I clicked on it, and you had just written a song, and you started playing it, and I was like, oh my god, that is really good. Like <laughs> Thank you. he's 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 going somewhere. Like he's going somewhere by himself somewhere. Like this is gonna happen. But I remember during Corona, we were all just kind of like, we're all bored. Bored. And like, we're all phone. bored and trying to figure out what, what we're going to do at nights and stuff. And so that's when I would surf social media. That's when I posted. And that's when you were <laughs> and posting. See, it works. And then it works. Right. And I'm just like, holy, holy moly, this is amazing. It was a good time for creatives. To yes. Be creative. Absolutely. 100%. You know? Yes. Yes. It, it, it was a blessing um, to really get on there and like just the fans, like they just cling to the music. Like, like you know, Kimber was saying, like literally put out a new song and like people were just craving it. Like they just wanted something new to listen yes. to. And yes. you know, it was, it was a time of uncertainty for sure. I mean, we're still kind of there. We don't really know what's going on, but yeah. you know, it's, um, for the music world, I thought it was like really thriving to use social media. I you know, think but. I'm just amazed that you, we haven't actually said the number, but when you're telling me this stuff, and of course we've known the music business in such a different way, and here now you can just put your own stuff up on your own way, in your own way on a platform that's right. you know, public. And so how many hits, how many views did that song get? A couple of different ones. Most of, I've had it like three or four hit the million mark. And it was like in a night. A million so, views. I remember going to sleep <laughs> and waking up and I was like, Am I reading this right? You wake, waking up and eating this, you know, <laughs> needing to wait, wait. needing that yeah, kick to really see. Let me wake up for a second. Let, let me see double. And see wait, that. let me see double. Oh, it was two million. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take that all day. And it's funny because they'll take back off again. Like a month will go by, and then all of a sudden they'll start going off like again, like randomly. I, I don't know how the the TikTok algorithm goes. So right now, everybody, crazy. get out your phone. Yes, <laughs> and get on TikTok. And look up Todd's songs, and you're gonna um, really enjoy that content. Yes. We Todd Cameron music. Yeah, Todd Cameron music. Streams, tens of views. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, John will come back from a, a gig, and he'll like, he's like, and I got paid tens of dollars. <laughs> yeah, tens of dollars. <laughs> and I got to play for tens of fans. Tens of fans. Hey, tens of views. Same man. <laughs> And my biggest crowd, I was online in my kitchen on one night. <laughs> it's you know? like 6,000 people jumped on. I was just like, okay, like this yeah. is great, you know. Um, but people, you know, people were great during during that time period and, and very blessed because it did help drive a ton of streams on Spotify, yes. Apple Music, yes. you know, and, and keeping my socials all the same, at Todd Cameron Music if you want to check it out. And I would watch it on Spotify. Always. I'm like, I would see you, your song. I'm like, going, oh yeah. my God, he's like real, he's, he is hitting it hard. I mean, it was just seeing all the other artists and people that were on there. I'm like, this is exciting for you. Like super exciting. I, I was blown away. I was not expecting it, but I think that the, the ticket is consistent releases. Like uh -huh. constantly putting out yeah. something new because they'll wear it out in a week. They're done with oh, yeah. it. So how do you, 
put out something that just continues to grab the fans and like they're like they're excited about it. They want to keep hearing something new, so they keep up with you. And you're like, oh gosh, he's got another one coming out. I can't wait for this. Create that excitement. Yes. And that's yes. what I did. I just kept putting up more and more new songs, and it was so funny because in a year's time. I didn't even pick up my guitar to start playing shows until January of this year. And that was at Alley Pub in Melbourne. Right, yeah. Alley's, oh, yeah. Wow. And, they, and that's only because Mark called me. He's like, man, I see you're putting out music. Are you playing? And I was like, no, nah, I'm done, man. I was like, I'm just throwing out songs I've just had in the back. You know, they've just been mm -hmm. in the vault for a while. And he's like, well, come play. Like, come down and play. Yeah. He said, well, you do want it. I was like, man, no, I'm, I'm, I really don't want to. And he's like, just come play, like, one show. And I was like, all right. I was like, well, all right, Mark, I'll come down. We'll do one show. And I come, I came down. I had my butt. I said, come down to sing harmonies with me. I was like, we're just going to play a bunch of covers. Yeah. We practiced one night in the kitchen at my house just for, like, verse chorus. <laughs> I course. went in this kitchen. So, yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, There's a lot of things. Uh, it's in the music Brent video, Mark's too. Stool. They may be called, so. uh, instead of, like, ramblings, this is the kitchen writing. <laughs> kitchen sessions. This is what we yeah, call it. New kitchen sessions. Cooking and writing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to be there. <laughs> and it just, like, it was crazy. We went down there and played, and I was like, Wow. Okay, I I do kind of miss this. And then mm -hmm. next thing I know, I've got more venues calling me. Like, hey, I see you. I just saw you play. Do you play again? Like, no, because I had told all these other venues. I was like, I'm I'm done. Like, I'm not playing anymore. And I just kind of let it go at that. Um, and yeah, it's just wild how it kind of came back into it. And then literally got the call, got to open up for Riley Green a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it was like five thousand people and yeah. at this state fair. And I was just like. Oh, we were walking wow. on stage, and I was you. like, oh, I wasn't prepared for this. I've seen the video <laughs> for Arlie, yeah. because the, 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 the scan of the crowd, the crowd. Like, oh, my gosh, it's, the people that are there. That's great. I mean, yeah. that was packed like sardines. That's like, that great. was insane, insane moment. It was fun. It was just like, but for me, I think the difference is, is I took the music so serious mm -hmm. whenever I was, like, in the duo and stuff, and I, I was just trying so hard, and it's mm -hmm. like, almost like the harder you tried, it just felt like you were getting nowhere and like it's funny the love of your life. not trying yeah <laughs> not, when you quit looking for it it just happens it just right? happens yeah. yes that's what happens it's, isn't that right john billings there you go <laughs> see i just left it all in god's hands i was like god whatever you yes. want you you take care of this you make it happen yep. and he's opened up the doors more than i ever could and i give him full credit for everything I'll so cheers to that. that's yeah. good yeah. absolutely and you know 100%. it sounds like god gave you a brain and you used it talent and you used it you didn't hold back you did all the things that you know you're asked to do and this isn't just luck so it's not just luck you you know you threw yourself out there lots of hard work and preparedness meets that moment of opportunity and it's a success so right. you're already the most i mean hearing this story just blows me away we wanted to bring you guys something different it's mm -hmm. a real national story but also a lot of those people come to town and they think they're just going to get discovered. And I hate to blow up the, the magic, <laughs> magic bean story, but that's not, that's not actually how the stock grows. Not how you know? it works. <laughs> not how the stock grows. It's no. like, and, you know, and so it's just amazing to hear this to me that you're already taking the matter into your own hands. And what's True. even neater is that there's platforms out there and this is a great way to use yeah. those yes. platforms. Absolutely. It's a great way. And you did it. Yes. You can do and it you're by still doing too. it. Yeah. And now we want to root you on and we want to give our listening audience and maybe anybody watching us uh, to uh, to actually support Todd and go and check out his music because we yes. want to set Thank a campaign for him to be picked up by a label. Yes. <laughs> We're going to throw that out in the universe. Hey, we, we take are. It. Whatever the good Lord wants, that's what that's, I'm good with it. So I did see that you get to play. Uh, you played at uh, Old Red. Yeah, like a few weeks yeah. back. I was like, "That's uh, hey, Blake Shelton, <laughs> right here." I get so many right messages here. about that. You should tell Blake to put you on the voice. I'm like, "Yeah, let me call him." Like, here's your guy. <laughs> call him right up. Yes. So I know so everybody needs to hashtag Blake Shelton on the <laughs> There you go. Yeah. So he'll see it. He likes his Twitter. Account, oh yeah. So Twitter, get him on yes. Twitter. So. Absolutely. No, that's great. I love Old Red. Great venue. Great staff. I mean, probably the best sound in in Nashville. Like, I mean, just it's amazing. It's place. fun, and the crowd. Yeah. Like, the crowd really engages. Like, yeah. they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, you know, actually, uh, you're know, going to be uh, playing there again this evening, so oh, it actually right. works out. Works out really good. Well, you have like five thousand bachelorettes screaming for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the weekends, the weekends are totally different than weekdays. Yeah, it's like it's like okay, I got to prep for this. So yeah, but no, they're 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 fun though. I love just the crowd. I like how it, and that's probably goes back to the question earlier about Nashville. What's changed about it? Like, mm -hmm. um, 
not that that part's changed so much, but when you do go down and you play for people now, like they are just like their mindset is music. Like yeah. they are just yeah. focused and they want to be a part of it. Like they just hold on to every word that you say. Mm -hmm. And I love that because if you do go to, unless you're opening up for somebody big, you know, and you're going to just a club out somewhere, it, it's tough to get those people that are sitting back at the bar and just trying there for a conversation. They're not there to, to watch the music. Right. How yeah. do you get their attention and yeah. stuff? And it's like Nashville just spoils you because you go out down there all just Wow. Right on you. I love that. that. I love to hear that about our town. That's something really positive I like. Well, tell us what's the name of your song mm -hmm. and the video and where they can go to find it right now. Sure. Yeah. Song is called uh, Ruin My Truck. Yep. In, and actually, the, the video will be coming out here in a couple weeks. So uh, it should be hopefully by the end of September or somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at um, it. But we basically shot this music video over a couple days. This is the song that went viral on TikTok that put up. Wasn't ready for it. Woke up the next morning, had a million views on it, and I was like, "Oh!" <laughs> Which is an amazing song, just song by the way, if you've not heard it yet. So, yes. thank you very much. And uh, it's a, it's a true story based on a true story. Um, I think a lot of people can relate because, you know, sometimes when a relationship's over, there's more than just, you know, the relationship that's over. You, there, there's other things that remind you too much. Like, yeah. Yeah, for some people, it's a house. For me, it was a truck, and it was like. And you what gotta, color you was that go. truck? Two tone blue. Two tone blue. There you go, everybody. So. And it's a make of what? Dodge. That's the only, you know, only way to go. <laughs> Product placement. I am, I'm a Ram Trucks fan. <laughs> I'm a Ram, so Ram Trucks. You know, <laughs> Ram if you're looking for somebody to use your trucks in the videos, I'm already doing it, but uh, you know, <laughs> definitely use another one. <laughs> you can never have too many of them. You know, my granddaddy so. had one, and uh, it's like a 1930-something. It's a Chevy, though. And I remember as a little girl, he had it parked. Um, at the back of the of the field where the we had you know a big farm, and they had it parked there. When I was a little girl, I used to sneak and get his keys, and I would put it in the ignition. And of course, you know everything back then stick shift. And so I turn I figured oh out how to do the pedals. So I turned it on where I could listen to the radio that was in the truck, and I would just sit in that truck for hours, like I roll the battery, roll the windows down. Yeah. No, actually, I did. That's where I was going with that. So I rolled the windows down. So the truck. So a few times, my granddaddy would start the truck, and it wouldn't start because I would be the one in there. I, I was the one who run the battery down. So, yeah. See, so girls good. ruining trucks. Yeah, ruining the truck. This is what so, happens. Yeah. If I missed that truck, I, I wish I could. I wish I would have been able to keep that truck. <laughs> because it was just very special to me and sure. trucks are trucks are you know they're your vehicles are your your lifeline because they are part of you and you do th they you are. know everything yeah, it's everything so but that's the one thing i remember my granddaddy that, <laughs> that special little truck that and i would ride in the back we'd have to go where we lived you either had to burn your trash yeah. back in the 70s or you would have to, I'm telling my age, <laughs> or you would have to go to this one little dump spot yep. that was, you know, where everybody went. Right. And yep. of course, I rode in the back of the truck. Of course, nowadays you can't really do that, you get in trouble. But I remember always riding in the back of his truck to the. Oh, I did it all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it always was just, riding. It was great. And I'd stand up and put my hands on top of it and, you know. No seat belts. Living on the edge. Nah. Living on the edge. Living on the edge. Yeah. Kids in the back of a truck. That was my life. <laughs> always growing up. I was always this kid in the back of the truck. Now. Absolutely. Taking all the fun away right. with these laws. No. So yeah. I have a question yeah. with writing music. So yeah. when, talking about being young, when did you, uh, when did you start writing music? How old were you? I think I wrote my first song, uh, probably like 15 or 16, honestly. I was in like a little high school band. We were awful. But, <laughs> I mean, we were we were not good, <laughs> but we thought we, we were. We thought you were. Oh yeah, I think we did like one coffee house dance, and then I like I remember I like started the band, and then somehow like got like shoved out of the band, and another guy came in. <laughs> they wanted to go more like metal or something, and it's it's funny. I still talk to the to the bass player sometimes. He's a good buddy of mine, Warren, and uh, like we kind of laugh about those days. They were too funny, uh, but you know, I we were like. That was the rock scene of like coming off Matchbox 20, going into like Three Doors Down and all yeah. that stuff. Like yeah. that's that was what we were into. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an old school rocker, so me yeah, too. I love it. But, she knows. Yeah. <laughs> you got, you got to be. And, uh, oh, yeah, there you go. Jet. So yeah. I love it. That's that was kind of my thing. So yeah, I mean it's been a while. So gosh, we're talking like 17, 18 years ago. So do you have writing. a do you have a um, 
uh, a Todd booklet of songs that you write that you just, or do you just basically write something you're feeling at the moment and that's what you go with? Um, I don't really write on paper anymore. I'm terrible about it. Uh, everything's pretty much, it's in the cloud. It's outside. in the cloud. <laughs> the iCloud. iCloud. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's where they store all of our information up there. Uh, no, I, I pretty much just keep everything on my phone because then I can, you know, I can write something on the spot, um, type it, fix it, you know, not constantly having, I used to write in pen and then it was just constantly oh, yes. marks all the way across. Not, I, kids still go back and do that. I did have an old booklet of, not good songs that I <laughs> tossed those. Songs. I don't even think there was a word worth you, keeping. When you get famous, you'll be yeah. able to auction it off for $5 million. Right. You know? yeah. Here you go. Yeah. I think I burn it somewhere. We burn our trash too. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, that was no. trash. I burn it. You should have but, talked to your PR person know, first. Right, right. <laughs> Missed the, miss the boat on that one. But. You know, Briley, she does that. She'll, my daughter, she'll, I went in there the other night. It was like 1 a.m. I forgot, thought she forgot to turn her light off. She has like the stars on the ceiling. Yeah. And she was sitting in there with her headsets on. And with her keyboard and she was writing music and That's you know i opened the door and i was like oh, it's the weekend i'm just gonna let her keep writing yeah just shut the let, door. Yeah. yeah just let her go let it go you don't know these yeah. million dollar ideas start at 3 a.m keep yeah. a notepad and a pen next to your bed That's yeah. right. so. I've well i've that. loved hearing these stories i think it's great we are rooting for you okay who's Thank gonna you. pick them up i don't know but we're gonna find out shortly i'm pretty sure yes but uh anyway this is a great story of not giving up and cheers to that hey yes. cheers to that Yay. thank you all so much thank for having you, me todd all right so if you're just now catching the tail end uh we don't want to leave you in the dust we want to make sure you know what the products is, the products are that we're featuring today so kimber take it from there. absolutely so again vespertino tequila cream which is fantastic it's fresh dairy um, cinnamon uh, just it is a true joy I promise you trust me on this and a big dose of alcohol and yeah they're, they're at 30 percent <laughs> alcohol yes 30 proof or uh, 30 proof rather and then um Griffin's Wharf which is a coffee liqueur which this is 60 proof would you have one um you actually have a song that's called whiskey proof right? I do I do so uh yeah so uh, try this and listen to it at the yeah, same time try these and then listen to his music and uh, I promise you you'll be in a happy mood <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us today. We thank greatly appreciate me. you being here. And uh, we can't wait to see your journey in the next few months of what's going to happen in the years to come. Yeah. So, thank here's you all to for you the support. To, yeah, we'll cheers to that. Scale. Absolutely. Here's all right. Day drinking Nashville. Absolutely. <laughs> cheers. <laughs>